Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, Uses of Nuclear Radiation. This topic was suggested by Yousef Bilal. If there's a topic you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. Now we've already considered in a previous video the three types of nuclear radiation. Alpha, Beta and Gamma. Once you understand their structure, you can start to understand some of their uses, and you do need to be familiar with some of the more common uses of them, and why that particular type of radiation is suitable for that particular use. And it all comes down to things like their penetrating power, how easily they're stopped, or how difficult it is to stop them. So let's run through some of those uses and have a quick look at them. Alpha particles, because they're stopped so easily, don't have an awful lot of use. Even a few meters of air will effectively stop alpha radiation. However, there is one particular use where that actually becomes a real benefit, and that is in a smoke detector. Smoke particles will definitely stop alpha radiation. And so a smoke detector works by basically having a source of alpha radiation inside the smoke detector, and it emits alpha particles, and there is a detector to detect those alpha particles. If for any reason that flow of alpha particles is interrupted, it sets the alarm off. Beta radiation can be used in systems which press out aluminium foil or paper to a certain thickness. The beta radiation is fired through the material and if too much is getting through then it must be too thin, whereas if not enough is getting through then it must be too thick. The sensor can then be connected to automatic machinery which will control the separation of the presses which are pressing that material. And so the whole system can be automated and it can be very, very responsive and it can respond automatically to changes in how thick or thin that material is. Finally, although gamma radiation is of course quite dangerous, the fact that it's incredibly difficult to stop can actually be quite useful. We can use it to sterilize things such as plastic hospital equipment, which is in a sealed container, which you wouldn't be able to heat because of course it would melt. So you can sterilize it by exposing it to gamma radiation instead. The same can be done for things like fruit and vegetables to sterilize them once they've been packaged and to help preserve their shelf life and extend their shelf life. We can also use gamma radiation as a tracer, for example, in medicine. Sometimes, for example, a patient may be given a meal containing a source of gamma radiation, and as they digest that meal, the doctors will be able to track whereabouts that meal is going in their body, if there's some sort of problem with their digestive tract, and it makes it much easier to diagnose problems. It can also be used to detect leaks in pipes underground. You add a source of gamma radiation to the water you put down the pipe, and if there's a large amount of gamma radiation coming out somewhere, you'll be able to detect it with a Geiger counter. Finally, although gamma radiation can be extremely dangerous because it's so difficult to stop, the fact that it is so difficult to stop and the fact that it causes quite a lot of damage to cells as it moves through them can actually be used for medical reasons, in particular trying to kill off a tumour. The simulation we're looking at here is a procedure known as a gamma knife. It's a way for surgeons to kill the cells in a tumorous growth, which is in an area of the body where it would be difficult and dangerous to operate otherwise. So somewhere in among the core organs or somewhere in the brain are the typical locations where a gamma knife will be used. The tumor is exposed to a source of gamma radiation from several different angles. This means all the surrounding tissue is exposed to potentially harmful radiation but the idea is to limit the exposure of the surrounding tissue by constantly moving that source of gamma radiation. However, notice that the tumour gets exposed to the radiation every single time. So the tumour is getting a much larger dose of radiation and the idea is that this will be enough to kill off the tumour by damaging the cells it's made from. It may seem inherently risky to deliberately expose a patient to radiation, but if they've got a tumour in a place where it's extremely difficult to reach and operate, this can actually be a better alternative. There's a link in the description to this simulation, so you can have a go at it yourself. I hope that video really helps you. If you want to check how well you understood, then try the snap quiz. The link is right here, and it'll also be in the description, along with all the other links for this video. If you want to check out my other videos, then click right here. If you want to download the free app I've made to help you with your revision, then you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here. Don't forget to leave likes, and if you go to the comments, you can give me feedback and let me know which topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.